All right, so this next video is going to talk about calculating the pH of acids. Um, first one we're going to talk about are strong acids, and those would be concentrated ones. If they're concentrated, all that they've generated are ions, and so the hydrogen concentration is going to come completely from the original concentration of your acid. This is going to look just like what we've done previously with calculating pH, and your hydroxide concentration would be very, very small because it would just be 10 to the negative 14th, the value of Kw over that hydrogen concentration. If you are a weak strong acid, you're very, very dilute, and that's what I mean by weak. You just have lots and lots of water in there. If there's more water than you have acid, um, then your pH is going to be totally based on water, and therefore your pH would be 7. And then your hydroxide and hydrogen concentrations would be equal. They'd be 10 to the negative 7th. So here I'm going to have you find the pH of a 0.25 molar solution of HNO3, a concentrated strong acid, and a 2.50 times 10 to the negative tenth molar solution. That would be a dilute strong acid. So for the first one, HNO3 is just going to split into H plus and NO3 minus. So therefore we can say if there's 0.25 molar HNO3, there's 0.25 molar H plus ions. And then we can use our pH equation to solve for the hydrogen concentration. You have three sig figs in that pH, so you need three decimal places when you calculate it, 0 0.602. When you're a dilute solution, you can go through and do the calculations realizing that all you really have is water and that the hydrogen concentration is going to be half of the equilibrium constant of water, 10 to the negative 7th, and then you can take the pH of that, which would just be 7. Or if you realize that only water is present, the pH is going to have to be um, half of the pKW of water, which would be 7. You cannot have a strong acid be basic. I guess it's the best way to help you remember this. With a um, pH value, you can use that to find the hydrogen concentration by working backwards. If you know that you have a strong acid and your pH is less than 7, then your species have to just be the two ions that are, have been broken apart. You can take the negative log of the hydrogen concentration to get your pH, but that also allows you to work backwards to get your hydrogen concentration, which in this particular case would be 7.9 times 10 to the negative 6. Because there's one hydrogen in HNO3, the HNO3 concentration would also be 7.9 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. With a weak acid, things are a little bit different because you don't completely dissociate. The vast majority of your acid remains intact. So your hydrogen source is going to come from your equilibrium constant, the amount of hydrogen that is generated when that acid dissociates in water. And your hydroxide would still be determined the way it was with a strong acid, but it typically will be a larger value because your hydrogen concentration isn't going to be as um, big. So to calculate the pH of a weak acid, we have to write an equilibrium expression showing the acid and water making the conjugate base of the original acid and the hydrogen ions. We have to set up an ice chart, and then remember that we ignore the x because we are going to make the assumption that the amount of dissociation of the acid is negligible compared to the k value that we're working with, and then we calculate what we're asked to find in our problem. Percent dissociation wasn't something I spent a whole lot of time on in class when I first talked about it, but it's basically just your 5% rule. Um, it's taking what your X is, the amount that dissociated over that initial concentration, and multiplying it by 100. If you are a more dilute acid, typically that percent dissociation value increases. So here I have the pH I want to find for 0.25 molar C6H5CO2H. And I do believe this is one of the acids on your chart. So the first thing I'm going to do is show what that acid does when it's combined with water. It would make hydronium ions, and it would leave behind the C6H5CO2, which would now have a negative charge. So if I was going to write the K expression, it would be the two products, H3O plus and C6H5CO2 minus, over the initial acid, C6H5CO2H. And from my chart, I can see that the K value for that expression is equal to 6.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. It's a fairly small K value, which means a very small amount of that original acid truly goes through dissociation. 
So when I set up my ice chart, the only concentration I have to begin with is the 0 0.250 molar. I don't have any of the H3O plus or any of the C6H5CO2 minus. So the left side needs to decrease and the right sides need to increase. Again, I'm allowed to assume that that X for the C6H5CO2H is negligible and that the other two went up by X. And if I substitute those into my K expression, I can find the amount of hydrogen that's actually generated from this weak acid. 0 0.0040. Um, you do not have to do the 5% rule. I will not give you problems that don't fulfill it. But that 5% rule is your percent dissociation, taking the value of x and dividing it by that original concentration. And when we multiply it by 100, we see that that percent dissociation was just under 2%. So if you take 0 0.004 away from 0.25, we're going to see that that amount of change is pretty much negligible. We can find the pH now using our hydrogen concentration, and that gave me a pH value of 2.40. I'm going to do this one more time for HCN. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I see that HCN and water are my major species. I'm going to write the equation showing HCN um, combining with water to make hydrogen ions and cyanide ions. I can set up my K expression, products over reactants. And I can find the K value on my KAKB chart, 4 times 10 to the negative 10. This one's even smaller, so I would expect the pH is probably going to be higher because of how small that K value is. Again, I only have the initial concentration of the HCN. I want to see how it changes in response to um, the HCN dissociating. And again, I get to assume that X after the 0 0.250 is negligible. So if I substitute those equilibrium concentrations into my K expression and I solve for X, I see that the X this time is even smaller, 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. So that definitely is going to meet my 5% rule. The percent association this time is well under 1%. And I can sign the pH now that I know my hydrogen concentration by taking the negative log of that value. And I see that the pH did go up to 5.00. Okay. And so I believe you have one more example with acids. This time I'm get telling you what the percent dissociation is of HF, and I want you to calculate the Ka value. So HF, when it's added to water, would make F minus and H3O plus. I know what my equilibrium expression would be, products over the reactants. Water, again, is not being included because it's a pure liquid, and solids and liquids are not a part of equilibrium expressions since their volumes do not change. If I know the original concentration of HF and I know the percent dissociation, I should be able to determine the change, which happens to be 0 0.0081. And according to my ice chart, that's what my two products should go up by, and that's what my reactant should decrease by, which means virtually nothing. So I would take the 0 0.0081 squared, and I would divide it by that original concentration of HF, and I get that the K value would be 7.1 times 10 to the negative 4. And I'm going to ask you to go look and see in your chart and see how that compares. I believe it's going to be pretty reasonable for that value. And so if you go and look at your homework, and my computer shut down a little earlier, so give me one second. Um, so we've talked about these two. You now should be able to do the questions on the pH calculations of acidic solutions.